So, I need some more glass to actually fill in those windows. But other than that, I think this is looking like a very cute little mini house. And I'm happy with how it turned out. We have a little bit more interior decorating to do. We have a bit more storage I can shove stuff into. We probably should put another couple barrels along here. I need to figure out what's going on in that filler section. And also, as I mentioned, we need more glass for those windows. And also, uh, speaking of more glass, I think I want to make glass bridges out here. Because while I do love having my striders to get around, I feel like a glass bridge where you might actually be below lava level just a little bit and get to see it sloshing around. I, I feel like that's just peak nether experience. And who am I to deprive my visitors of the peak nether experience? Cute little decoration bits. Cute little decoration bits. Now, does... Cute little decoration bits! On the other hand... Oh! Oh! Nah, sorry leaves. I have an excuse to use the copper! Cute little decoration trim! Incoherent gibberish! Don't we love it? Look, if you don't make high-pitched squeaking noises while building, is it even a build? No, I didn't think so. Make more high-pitched squeaking noises to show your appreciation. Go on. Ha have you told your builds you love them yet today? Well, I am satisfied with how my prank against Plasma went. But I feel like we could go further. We could do some more pranks. And I have some debts to settle. Admittedly, thus far, most of the debts I am aware of are positive debts I have to other people. Such as the debt I owe to Omelette, which I should get around to finishing now that my own projects are finished enough that I can be compelled with other people's work. Now, my debt to Omelette is beyond the scope of this episode, as is my debt to Draken. Because he has made it very clear that that debt will be collected at a time of his choosing for the iron he has gifted us. And far be it from me to take, advan take away whatever plan he has just to make my life easier. No, I will let him call that in at exactly whatever dramatic moment best suits his needs and desires. Now, I will be putting myself in debt in many ways to the my fellow members of the server with these pranks, because I have no grievance justified with any of them. But until I know who it is I actually have a grievance with for denying me access to the Doppelgangers Association, I am simply going to be uh, incredibly annoying. As a general thing to end people. So, there are some people to whom I owe a debt. And they shall be exempt from my pranks. But for other members of the server, those who I have found some sort of invitation in to prank them, I shall. And so, I have openings for both Spider Hearts and Kaza. So, yes, we just have this lovely cave that I feel could use some more lighting. So we find some sections of Spider's Tunnel that could use some brightening up, some added cheer. Really, what more could you want? Okay, actually, this is remarkably bright for an area being illuminated by glow berries, primarily. Good work, Spider. You're not giving me any spots that seem 
Okay. There is at least one spot here that is gloomy enough. And there we go. Some added illumination for Spider Heart's base. A little bit uh, bright, a little bit cheery, and a little bit incredibly ominous and threatening. Which is exactly the sort of vibe we're going for here. So I'm just going to stick a few of these at interesting locations for Spider Heart's base. And actually I'm going to have to sign this with some of the autumnal decoration. Even if mysterious lava sources are probably attributable best to a single person. So let's just add another spot of interesting light sources. This one perhaps being the most dangerous. But I strongly doubt that anyone walking through is actually going to fall into that. Okay, hopefully she does not actually log back into her own base while I'm doing this. This might be the appropriate time for me to bail out of here before I get caught. Eh. No. No, hubris is fine. I reckon that that's enough for a little uh, prank. Some ominous death liquid. A little pile of autumnal decorations. My work here is done. Hello! Can we hear each you other? You asked for these lions. Well, I might say yes, but that might be lion. <laughs> the lion puns have been a common feature of today. Here are the lions you asked for. You asked for lions, right? I will neither confirm nor deny whether or not I have asked for such, but I will be grateful. Where did I put his invisible wings? Why do I think that that was in the shulker box that got destroyed on stream? And I have no idea how I came to be in the possession of some custom lions, despite having been actively present while that just happened. There we go. We now have supplies for making some trouble. So it appears the curious case of the missing wings continues because the invisible wings are in fact invisible and I cannot find them. However, while I'm at it, let's grab some Curse of Binding for a specific little piece of trouble. And presumably with a trading hall this big, one of you librarians will have Curse of Binding. Right, well, a player lives here. That player appears to be Kaza. Which means that I'm looking for the other nearly identical name further this way. Well, I see another player be here indicator. Am I enough of a fool to jump straight down the beacon? Yeah, that went about as well as I was predicting it would. And my supply of reserve totems is lower than I would like. Here we have the observatory, which I did not need to fall down that mine shaft to find, and which does have at least one door. Okay, I see my own head on here. I suddenly feel like I have twice as much opportunity to do this.
You know, I didn't think that was supposed to also be a noisemaker, but I will take it. Now, since one of the problems I have is that no one seems to accept that this face is a different person, I just have to put the normal spring face onto somebody else so that we can be seen at the same time. I just frame Kaza for being my good doppelganger. That's definitely how this works. And also, uh, the noisemaker effect is an added bonus that was not intended, but I am not complaining about. Right, there we go. Both of the front doors have now been rigged up to give an interesting surprise if you come through them the wrong way. And then let's rig up uh, another pair to provide a different interesting surprise over here. Ah. Never mind, those doors are on the wrong half of the block for that. Right, and let's just finish this up by seeing if I can't actually make something tied to that door work. Now, I'm not worried about this doing an excessive amount of damage to anyone. Okay, and because it's a double door, I can only have this going on one side and still have this work. So I really don't have to worry about this doing an excessive amount of damage. He's just going to glow in the dark a little bit. In fact, I'm willing to test this. Does a dispenser not... Okay, I now do glow. So, one arrow certainly will not be doing a significant amount of damage. And now, my, pr my work here is done. I have suitably pranked Kaza with the exact technique he showed me. And while I could leave by way of my home area, I feel like his nether portal is not at well connected. On the other hand... Yeah, I do not like whatever is going on with this nether portal. But perhaps I can find my way out of here. So, I just had a brilliant idea to help clean up a little bit of the decorations around my base. And to reinforce the idea that there are, in fact, two separate auroras. We take and make a pair of armor stand statues. And if I were better at armor stand sorcery, these two would be more visually distinct. I would be holding a lovely sword, and my counterpart could be holding something useless like a shovel. I have spare swords, and I have a random junk shovel in here. It would be easy to assign both of them. But alas, armor stand magic is not my preferred type of sorcery. However, we still have a beautiful effect here in the grand hallway with a pair of very ominous statues looking down on you. And when you get a bit closer, yes, you can see that I have skimped out on details. Okay, okay, fine. I should probably put in some armor stand magic. Or at least a little enough leather that we have pants. Because not having pants is going to bother me immensely. Now, to keep these properly in theme for the two of us, mine should be grey, and my counterparts should be red or pink. 
Well, it should be red, but I have plenty of pink dye, so they're going to be pink. The gray is a little bit more expensive. So I'm going to take a moment to go squid hunting, because I need squid also for a book and quill. Right. And so I'm just going to leave some lecterns with books detailing interesting events. And I have one extra lectern which can be set aside, because I'm sure I will find uses for lecterns again in the future at some point or other. I should probably also actually do separately color-coded leather chest plates and the like. But with a pair of different leather pants, that still works. Yes, when seen from a distance... Excuse me. 